All right, in today's video, I'm going to talk about a great side hustle that you should look into doing, whether you're still working your full-time job or whether you're partly retired, whether you're unemployed or whether you're fully retired. This is a great uh, option for some people. It's not going to apply to all because you're kind of geographically limited. It is getting your boat captain's license. And what I'm talking about is getting the small license first. And here is one school down in Key West uh, of all places. And you can go and get a OUPV license. And that allows right here, it's the uh, OUPV license allows the transport of up to six passengers on an uninspected vessel. So what does OUPV mean? Let's go Google that. Blammo. So we got the um, OUPV license. The, uh, this license is properly termed operator of uninspected passenger vessels, OUPV, and they call it the six pack because you can take up to six people, including then you have seven on board, the captain and then six passengers. And you can do charters, uh, eco tours, harbor tours river tours wherever you live with a body of water lake tours um yeah of course you got you got to be near body of water a lot of stuff i've seen up in the say the disney world area is they have their own little man-made river systems and the boats the little ferry boats run back and forth they're not on rails they're not on chains or lines they're free running boats and they have captains now that's a higher tonnage than a six-pack license but it just shows you there's all these great jobs out there. A lot of those guys are retired and they're just running the boats, working part-time at Disney. Not a bad gig, right? Not a bad gig at all. So let's dive into it. So this school happened to find, I happened to find in Key West. Uh, it's called the Captain School of Key West. I recommend if you are gonna go do it, go into a class. They want you to pass, they wanna help you. You have up to three chances to pass the four tests. They want you to, pass and they're going to walk you through it and make sure you understand the material uh, Four tests, and one includes a navigation test for um, plotting on the chart a chart test one is rules of the road which is a standardized government test and you can only miss like two or so you can't miss many they want you to know the rules of the road the coast guard does uh, there's two other ones too it came out to four tests it wasn't it was it was grueling but it was um, yeah it was grueling but it was worth it. I learned a lot going through the course. So what do you guys need to do? I did this in a week. I got it. And uh, let's, all right, let's describe it first. All right, you go in, you get the inland near coastal. Uh, you got the Great Lakes as well. So you got all these options, right? And uh, let's see, you got two licenses. Eligi Here's what I want to go over. Eligibility requirements. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard application age. 18 years old, sea experience, OUPV inland, 360 days, operating a small vessel, 90 days of the 360 must be within the last three years, OUPV near coastal, 360 days, operating a small vessel, 90 days of the 360 must be upon uh, near coastal waters beyond the boundary line, the boundary line, 90 days of the 360 must be within the last three years, a day is defined as more than four hours away from the dock so really you just you just need your coaster right and they uh, wanted to make sure you know the waters in your area you're going for the license so basically the sea days can count your whole life if you had a boat years ago you can count you know trying to remember your sea days if you owned it make sure you have the registration and that you owned it as the master and you can put that down as your experience on the sea the sea days or the river waterways whatever uh chesapeake uh rivers uh near coastal stuff like that right uh you put that down but it has to be 90 days have to be within the past three years so you're sort of current so if you've been running the sandbars and stuff with your family you know, you're out you're gonna be out for four hours boom that's a day and sometimes sandbars are four to seven miles out so you're gonna be out near coastal but depends where you are right so you got to think about that do you meet the 360 days and if you're into boating, even me, I was casual. I had a Chesapeake boat, and then I had a boat down in the Florida area, and I, I fit right in. I just got my I had my um, sea days requirements, and then I went to the course. 
and uh, went through the test and passed all that stuff. That's it. The main thing is uh, make sure you have that days and then go through the ca the class. And then here you go. Upon successful completion, attendance and passing the required exams, you will receive a diploma from the school. Students send diploma and application to the U.S. Coast Guard, REC, along with your U.S. Coast Guard application to receive your U.S. Uh, CG license. You have up to one year. You have up to one year after you uh, uh, to submit your application to the Coast Guard from the date on your diploma. So you, once you get your diploma that you pass the class, all the four tests, you have a year to submit your paperwork. They can help you. This school is good because they help me. They can help you with your paperwork and they can do it for you for 100, 100 bucks. I think that was a, I think they raised it, but uh, it was well worth it. They know how to do it. They know the system. You're paying for their knowledge and it does help. I, I submitted my stuff. The biggest pain was going to get in a physical and you have to find a doctor that will do the standardized Coast Guard physical for you. You know what I mean? And there's one little old curmudgeon doctor somewhere, you know, net, uh, tucked away in a room somewhere that you have to find that will do the U.S. Coast Guard physical. Uh, you get that out of the way, boom. Uh, then you, you, uh, once you, once you submit the paperwork, on average, it takes at least three months to hear back from the Coast Guard. And there is an online status checking. You can see the process where it's at. So you're not going to get it right away. You're going to have to wait. It's all bureaucracy. It's all government. And uh, it will take time to get your actual license. But you can actually check up on it and see how far it is through the process, through the uh, Coast Guard site. It's well worth it. If you have the sea days, go for it. I would recommend going to a class. You'll actually network that way as well. Because you'll meet other guys doing the same thing. And then you start networking in that community and it helps because then they, people need boat captains. Trust me, there is a need because a lot of people can't show up to work sober, show up at all, and even pass a drug test. So they're disqualified. You have to be clean. And part of that too now, once you're in a, um, uh, once you get your thing, you can join a drug consortium and then they random uh, drug test you like pilots just to make sure you're clean. And that helps with insurance and helps you get jobs too. Uh, you can go then find a charter business. I do not recommend doing your own charter. It's not, you're not going to make any money. I'm being honest. The cost of insurance, uh, the cost of slip fees, the cost of boat maintenance and uh, fuel. Uh, did I say insurance as well? It's ridiculous. You'll not make any money. Plus there's a, if it's seasonal, it's going to be a hospitality industry, basically. You're not going to make any money. It's not going to be a consistent flow. You're going to have good days, good weeks, maybe good months, and then you're going to have some dead months where nobody's doing anything. And then you still have uh, bills to pay. You still have slip fees to pay, uh, maintenance, and uh, stuff like that. So it's a good job as a part-time hustle to go work with a group, make sure they're decent people, make sure the owner's not a douche, uh, because you don't want your day to be ruined. You're just there to have fun, take out a boat, go eco tour, go to a sandbar, take a group out to looking for um, whales or dolphins or stuff like that, uh, or just or just run around the island or run around the river or do um, a sightseeing tour or sun sunset cruises. There's all types of things. It's a great hustle to get your butt out of the house, away from the computer, away from the horrible television. You should not be watching television. You should not be watching Netflix. You should not be watching cable news. If you are, you're doing everything wrong, no matter what age. Cut all that crap out. It'll pollute your mind. And go do this. If you can do it, do it. If you meet the C-Day requirement, go do it. It's well worth the price. It's well worth the experience. And once you get your certificate from the Coast Guard three months later, then go do it. In the meantime, start asking around. Hey, do you guys need captains? I put my paperwork in. Uh, it's probably going to be ready in um, uh, <clears throat> two to three months, three to four months, whatever, three months. And uh, keep me in mind. And they'll say, hey, when you get it, let us know. And uh, they'll take you out, take you on a training session. <clears throat> and then they'll, um, they'll uh, sign you up, put you on the insurance, and you will be good to go. So definitely a great side hustle. I mean, you can also get, uh, depends how they run the operation. You just get a W-2. You're working part time. It could be a couple thousand bucks a month, depending on how much time you want to work. My advice is don't kill yourself. 
do um you i mean some some charter companies you can do uh you can be on a schedule three trips a day that's too much trust me even if you're young you don't need the money that bad i would do just say hey i can do one trip a day that way you'll enjoy your day by the time you get there depending what time the crew the cruise goes the trip goes out you got to prep the boat maybe fuel the boat put the food or snacks on board the sodas uh, make sure the boat works there's nothing shorted out and we had one this morning where the wire the resistor shorted out there was a little white smoke coming out from behind the helm we're like what never saw that before and ran the boat the night before no issues you just don't know uh stuff will just pop up so you gotta get there early so your whole day is gonna be depends on your tour uh it could be at least four hours so yeah one's enough and then you go out and you have fun and you're dealing with people and again that's the other thing you're gonna be dealing with the, the guests the uh you're forward facing on the public sometimes it can be difficult but not all the time sometimes you get some nice people that are really enjoying just being on a boat uh but if you do a lot of tours dealing with the public will wear on you it, uh, it'll grade on your on your your nerves and you'll be like why am i doing this that's why i recommend just do it a little bit and uh, don't overdo it i kind of overdid it and i was getting sick of people like dealing with the get the kids on the boat oh it's just annoying but you do i figure if i did one trip a day maybe a couple days a week that's fine and you get some tip money maybe and you can do that can go to feed your dog you know buy yourself some groceries maybe cover your mortgage or whatever maybe cover incidentals and it lessens the fact that you're drawing from your uh, nest egg your retirement or uh, or other stuff and then say you're working 40 hours a week you can say hey man i can work one trip one to two trips saturday and sunday if you just want to get out get some sunshine on the water it does uh you got to realize when you're out in the water it's amazing you're out in nature not even minding the guests if they're being difficult or not uh, most are decent but in general if you're out in the water and sunset and that it's it's an it's not a bad office to be in you know odds are you're probably making a quarter of what you're making at your day job but if you're retired it's extra money and you're not standing at a costco or out front of a supermarket in a vest handing out uh, a wing dings or rolled up hot dogs in a bun which is kind of humiliating i would just go out in a boat have fun there's not much exertion you're pretty much you know moving around loading gas you're not really lifting much maybe putting some sodas in the cooler uh let's see yeah you're not doing really doing much of physical exertion you're uber on the water you are an uber driver on the water with a boat and you just have to know how to handle a boat as well it could be any size boat you know uh 18 foot up to whatever 27 foot 20 we find 25 foot's fine down where uh where we run it's great good option go check it out i'm trying to think what else you need to know yeah you have to be sort of in shape to pass the physical uh basically you're not herniated out or you're just not a you know blind and deaf <laughs> you know that's going to disqualify you qualify you because you, you know they want to be make sure you're safe almost like pilot not as rigorous as obviously as a pilot goes through oh my god I did a pilot medical exam. They really go through your eyeballs. Yeah, I never had so many tests. It was hours, man. We we're like an hour and a half, two hours going through the whole eye test. It was intense. But I hear something to check out. And once you get that, you can then go through other ones. You get the CPR first aid, which is a certified class. You go in class and um, <clears throat> they give you dummies. They teach you how to use the uh, defib machine, how to use all the stuff on the, on the, ma on the mannequins they put out on the desk. Uh, it's it's pretty good pretty good experience because if you have someone on the boat that does have an issue you want to know how to treat them uh, until help until first responders get there you get to them you can also then go to a master's class if you want to go uh, bigger on tonnage bigger boats means more people it means more stress but it means you got a first mate to deal with the people i prefer the small boats because you only have up to six people to deal with whereas on the big boats you get about the 45 people or 12 to 45 it's ridiculous it'll drive you nuts a lot of the uh, experienced captains who command the bigger boats like the small boats because the small boats you know i'm talking 25 footers can get into some areas the big boats can't sandbars mangroves backcountry stuff uh rivers whatever you, it, it's definitely the way to go i did it i'm a total idiot i went to public school and i was able to get one of these things and actually get a job i showed up on time i looked presentable um and i was never drunk or uh on drugs never uh, always always reliable and that's the secret right there bam they like you and they, you know as long as the owner's a decent person you'll have a good time and set expectations 
and you might enjoy it. Good side hustle, something to think about. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. What are your side hustles? Anything to get you out of the house. That's This is one of the best side hustles I can think of. Otherwise, most people are online, uh, like me, crypto mining, which is not really a side hustle. It makes pennies, but it's something to do. And then, or they're trying, trying to sell stuff on online, but they're always inside in front of a computer. That, that'll drive you mad. You got to get outside. Go do something outside. And that's why I thought, let me just share this with you guys and uh, go out and check out being a boat captain, man. Not a bad thing. Not a bad option. And if um, it's doable. So that's all I got. And it was like a very low cost entry uh, just to pay for the class. And then I don't think you have to pay for the license. I don't know. Just to help to get the application done was only 100 bucks, And that's it. I don't think you write the Coast Guard a check because it's a government. But uh, then uh, after all is done, you get your little, like a passport back, which your, it's your captain's license. And you're good to go for a few years until you have to renew it. Uh, yeah, something to think about, guys. Go for it. Check it out. Uh, give it a try. It's like me. I've been doing it almost almost two years now. I'm, it's kind of wearing a little thin on me. Uh, so I might go and reinvent myself yet again. And that's the secret of life. You got to know when it's not a right fit or you're done with it or you've done it. It's like, okay, I get it. Um, you know, like me, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of some of the guests and dealing with them. I like being out in the water and all, but sometimes the guests, you know, get on your nerves. But you get tips sometimes on great guests and you have some nice guests. It's all balancing act and it's all moderation. But uh, the secret, like I'm saying, no matter how old you are, is how to reinvent yourself and finding that answer. Uh, it's not the meaning of life. It's like, okay, to me, I've done this for two years. What else can I do now? And I'm looking at something else tomorrow. I'm going to go check that out and the feasibility of it. It's not really so much about the money, but it's nice to have the money to maybe cover a mortgage payment a month. And that's it. And then you don't have to touch your nest egg or your savings or sell stocks. That's where I'm getting at. And it's a fun thing. Uh, if you have any questions about pursuing a captain's license, let me know. Post the comments below. Uh, I can give you more details. And uh, if you want, what you should do is schedule the class. Go to this guy. This guy was good. Mark at this captain school in Key West. Uh, him and his wife run this. <clears throat> I would come down, sign up for the class. You have to take a pre-test to get ready. It's like a, you have to go through all these little courses they have online on their site just to get you prepped. And it's prepping you for a lot of the testing, like rules of the road, <clears throat> all that stuff, signals, signage, uh, all that stuff you're going to go through class anyway. And you're taught by an experienced captain. But I would sign up, get on the schedule, make sure that you get all the prerequisite stuff out of the way, and schedule time to come down to Key West for a week. And uh, take the course, boom, you met people in Key West, and it may be an option. You'd come down here and work for a month or two, and, uh, and then you go back to your home, be a snowbird, come down, work, run a boat, have some fun, and then in the wintertime, be down here. Summertime hits, you go back up to your home where it's snowing or whatever, or not snowing, where it's summertime up there. You know, you snowbird on down. We had a couple in our class that came down from, I don't know, Maine or something or something like that. And they took the class because they flew into Key West, took it just to get it. Something to do. They just wanted to knock it off their list. And they, they busted it out. And I thought that was very interesting. So that's another option for you. That'll satisfy your uh, travel bug. And come down, stay in Airbnb at Key West. Go take this uh, school. What is it? Captain School of Key West with Mark. And uh, boom, what an experience. There, man. I just gave you something to do, which could turn into a nice side hustle for you. You're welcome. Any questions below, post them. Or go check out his site, Mark's Captain School, uh, CaptainSchoolKeyWest.com. All right, I'm out. Let me know what you think. I am going to go take my doggy out for a walk. Oh, and he loves going out on the boat as well. My little 17-pound dog, he gets a kick out of it. All right, thanks for you. Thanks, you. <laughs> English hard for me. All right, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later. Let me know what you have to say about all this. Love to hear your comments. Only good ones. Eh, even bad ones. I don't care. I'm out.